see this is a very recent catalog sixteen hundred and thirty three dollar will buy you one this is a picture out of the 25th edition of machinery's handbook and they tell you how to use the instrument I did spend a couple of hours cleaning up this instrument and it looks quite a bit better than when I first got it it was stained and, and dirty and uh, but it, it looks better now it is in good condition it is missing one of the screws and that's the only thing that I could find wrong with it now I'm going to show about a five or ten minute clip of that minor restoration but that will be shown without sound at the end of this video so in this video or series of videos I'm going to show you how to use this and to check the thickness of a gear tooth and I'll do that on two different gears but just a little bit of preparation before we start and one is that you really need to learn how to read a vernier scale and there are two scales to make it even more complicated on the caliper and to make it even more complicated there are different kinds of scales on different calipers this is a 20 division vernier scale some calipers and I'm not sure what the steroid has without looking at it again might have a 25 so there's just a little difference in how you read that and if you do not already know how to read a vernier I know this is this could be tough and but just enjoy this for uh, entertainment value if you don't actually want to ever do this and why would you ever want to do this because in fact when you cut a gear you got a, a tooth cutter a gear cutter and if your blank is truly the correct diameter that's very important and you cut the gear to the correct depth it should be correct unless there's something wrong with your machinery but in a big factory where they're going to make thousands of gears and so on they need to check that make the machinery uh, make sure the machinery is set up and they can also use this to measure the size of the uh, gear cutter I believe so it has a, a definite purpose often this would be used mainly uh, I think in the inspection lab maybe not so much out on the shop floor I'm not totally sure of that Put it in the comments if you have used one of these. There are all kinds of books that you can use as reference. Some of them pretty complicated. You can also find out a lot of information on the internet. There are pages and pages in the machinery handbook that uh, covering that probably more than you even want to know. And I have several books besides this, but let's start with just a few definitions and, uh, and some terminology here before we actually start taking any measurements looking at machinery's handbook you will see that we have to do the measurement a certain distance down on the gear tooth because the measurement needs to be taken at the pitch circle okay you need to know these terms and probably can get away with with just this but this is a great picture here showing the pitch circle I just mentioned that the addendum and look where the little arrow goes here I hope you can see that but that is the distance from this dot up to the top and then the dedendum is the distance between the pitch circle and the bottom of the tooth again there's the thickness of the tooth and that's what we are measuring circular pitch is the distance from the center of one tooth to the next and then a working depth and hole depth are terms that you need to know hole depth is the depth from uh, the outside diameter to the bottom of the tooth working depth is the amount of mesh that the two teeth have this is a rack you know which is a straight gear a rack has a flat on the top of the tooth all other circular gears are slightly crowned let's go back to that other picture it may not show up too well here but the top is a little bit round and because of that 
rather than just using the addendum we have to use the corrected addendum you'll see what that is in a minute and that can be calculated with various formulas and I would say you want to stay away from that because in machinery handbooks there are <laughs> available that information in a, a tabular form so you don't have to calculate it you can just take it right out of a chart in other words there's a chart for that the first thing you need to do on the gear that you're going to measure is determine what the diametral pitch is now you may already know that if you have cut the gear you you will know that that this is a 12 pitch 12 diametral pitch gear that's a homemade one that I showed you in a video at one time so these are the two gears that we're going to measure and this is a 16 diametral pitch. How do I know? I used this gauge, and that's from Bruce Witham, whom I, who I have met, and he's a real neat guy. And there are various other kinds of gauges too, but you just match up the teeth, and you can see that that's a 16. Well, this one doesn't fit. So it's something between a 16 and a 32. How in the heck are you going to figure that out? Well, there are several ways. One is to use a set of Sterrett or Brown and Sharp gauges, and I think Boston Gear has them, probably a lot of other companies. But here's another way. This little information sheet came from the good guys over at Lost Creek Machinery in Ottawa, Illinois. Many of you have been there or know these guys. They have a nice website. That's lostcreekmachinery.com. Look it up. But they would often have people say, uh, I need a gear, but I don't know what size. So they would send this out. And in order to determine the diametral pitch of a gear, it says, let me read it here. And you might want to print this out. If you are not sure of the diametral pitch, use the simple procedure to determine that. Take one of your gears, count the teeth, add two, divide by the sum of the diameter. So if I take my 16 tooth and I add two for 18, I divide 18 by the diameter, so you have to measure that with a micrometer, do the math, and uh, carry it out to the